Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to provide an overview on Apple Pay, a payment service provided by Apple. Apple Pay has been around in the market for quite some time and it provides a convenient way to perform payments in the countries it is allowed. So, what are we going to cover in this video? In the first section of the video, we will look at a very brief overview of what Apple Pay is and what type of payments it supports. In the second section, we will look at different software and hardware components within Apple Pay. In the third section, we will look at what happens when a card is registered in Apple Pay, how a card is registered in Apple Pay, and what happens when you perform a payment when in Apple Pay. I'm not going to cover all registration flows and different types of payment methods. I have only taken uh, one example for each and then given a flow. Also, I don't intend to go into the detailed technical aspects within Apple Pay. Now, let's go to the first section. What is Apple Pay? Apple Pay is a payment service provided by Apple. If you have any Apple device, such as an iPhone, MacBook, iPad, or an Apple Watch, you can register your payment card credentials on the device and perform payments. Let's say, if you have an Apple iPhone, you don't need to carry your plastic. You can carry your phone and then perform payments at a POS terminal using contactless using your Apple iPhone. Let's say you're performing a checkout from an e-commerce app on your Apple iPhone. You can use your Apple Pay to perform in-app transactions from your Apple iPhone or could be an iPad. Similarly, if you are doing a checkout from a website, an e-commerce website on your MacBook, then you can pay using Apple Pay on your MacBook. Known for its convenience, Apple Pay provides a very seamless method for performing payments on all the devices. Now, let's move to the next section. In this section, let's look at the different fundamental components within Apple Pay. We look at what is wallet app, we look at what is secure element, we look at what is secure enclave, and about Apple Pay servers, and a brief about NFC controller, and an important keyword called as a secure intent. In the actual physical wallets that we carry, we usually have one or more payment cards, or we also carry transit cards or tickets. Apple's wallet app provides a mechanism where these can be stored digitally and then we can use them. Many of these physical payment cards and transit cards use NFC technology, which is also available on the Apple device using which we can perform these transactions. In addition to the payment card and transit cards, Apple's wallet app also provides mechanism to add identity cards and our car keys, etc. So specifics to our subject payments, what does this Apple wallet app do? It is an application on your Apple device using which you can add or delete card credit. It can also be used to view the cards that you've added. It can be used to view the transactions that you have performed. Basically, it is just a an user interface to view the cards and transactions. Please note, this app in itself does not store the card credentials. The card credentials are stored in a different area called as a secure element, which we will cover in the next slides. This is a very important fact to note because to ensure the security of the card credentials and the transactions, it is run by a different processor within your Apple iPhone called a secure element. The normal processor which is used to run your apps or games, etc., is the same processor that is used to run your Apple Wallet app. But as the payments in itself to ensure the security is run by a completely different component called as secure element. Before I get into secure element in the Apple devices, I want to give an overview about the different mobile NFC payment methods and then a brief overview of the secure element. The next three slides are going to cover these basics and it is very important to understand them before we understand what is the secure element in the Apple device. Mobile NFC payment methods are primarily two categories. The first one is host card emulation, introduced as a part of Android 4.4 version. In this host card emulation model, the same processor which takes care of the normal mobile app activities such as SMS, phone calls, WhatsApp, 
Facebook, etc., takes care of the payments as well. Where this core processor operating system directly interfaces with the NFC controller to perform the payment transactions as well. Also, the payment credentials generally are stored in the same memory component where the normal files, photos, app data is stored, but it is stored in a secure and an encrypted manner. The second category is secure element based. In the secure element, there is a separate chip or a processor on the mobile device which takes care of the payments. It is isolated from the normal processor which takes care of the day-to-day -day activities or the other apps. The secure element also stores the payment credentials in a secure fashion. Both of these are secure, but each of them have their own advantages and disadvantages. For example, in case of secure element, you need a separate chip which adds to the cost and how it is maintained. Whereas in host card emulation, the same processor is also catering for payments and normal day-to-day -day activities. I'm sure we have come across a lot of plastic cards with chips in them, be it our identity cards or be it our payment cards with a chip on them. So let's see what the chip contains. In case of an identity card, the chip typically contains the identity information, could be our employee number or it could be our student number, etc. If it is a MyFair based uh, identity card, then it has the capability to execute MyFair commands. That is the commands specified in the MyFair protocol. Similarly, if it is a payment card, then the payment card chip consists of the card credentials and it has an operating system which is compliant to EMV code which again is based on ISO 7816 or ISO 14443 protocol and it is able to execute commands as specified in the EMV Co protocol. So each of these cards can, is, is, is of a different card type. It could be MyFair or it could be EMV Co, etc. It has a software which is an operating system or an application which is able to execute commands for the given card type and specification and it has data according to the card type and specification. So the MyFair chip stores data in a different fashion, whereas an EMV Co chip card stores data in a different fashion. So what is a secure element? Similar to the chip cards implemented on a plastic, a secure element is a chip card or a chip implemented on a mobile. Each of the secure element has its own OS or an application that runs on the chip that is able to store a sensitive data, execute commands as required by the protocol. Let's say if it is a payment card or a stored on a secure element, then it is able to execute EMV core based commands and is able to execute cryptographic of operations required for performing payments. Primarily, there are three types of secure elements. The secure element could be a SIM card or the secure element can be stored in the form of an SD card put on a mobile or the secure element could be an embedded chip or an embedded processor within the same mobile. What does an Apple iPhone use? Which variant does an iOS use? It uses an embedded secure element that is a, a, a secure chip that is hardwired onto the Apple iPhone. So Apple uses this embedded secure element. You would see sometimes ESE, so embedded secure element. It has a microprocessor chip and it uses a platform called as Java card platform, which is which runs the operating system, um, sometimes also referred to as applets. Apple's specific embedded secure element can mimic multiple types of card types. I mean, it, it doesn't just mimic only payment cards. Apple's secure element has the capability to mimic a MyFair card or it has uh, the capability to mimic Sony Felica protocol or it has the capability to mimic EMV Co protocol and it is able to store the data in different data formats. So just to give a quick recap, we don't use HCE in Apple iPhone. We use secure element based uh, payment methodology. And that too, when we talk about a secure element, we don't use SD card based or we don't use a SIM card based secure element. We use an embedded microprocessor chip which takes care of the whole payments. Now, the next important component that enables the whole Apple iPhone is the authentication of that particular transaction. I'm sure we know that authentication is the most important point to ensure that the payment is performed by the legitimate person. What are the ways that we typically authenticate the transaction? It could be a face ID 
or it could be a touch id or it could be a passcode which only the legitimate person knows so apple uses passcodes touch id and face id and this component within an apple phone which takes care of the authentication is called as secure enclave so secure enclave has again its own processor a separate memory where it stores and the next one is nfc controller so any phone be it apple or android phones that you have you have an nfc controller which takes care of communicating with external devices basically it is like an antenna which is used to handle nfc based protocols and it is a gateway to secure element so any incoming and outgoing requests that go to the whole secure element is governed via this nfc controller the last component that we are talking about in this whole apple pay ecosystem is the apple pay servers so apple pay servers are servers that are are running out in their own apple premises so they are also called as trusted service managers so they help in communicating with the outside world be it with the schemes or the issuers etc now let's look at an important keyword called as secure intent so what is secure intent this is an operation that the user initiates basically a method that the user performs to any to initiate a particular action let's say iphones that you get if you double click on the power button which is on the right side of the apple phone then it starts to initiate a payment an nfc based payment so this intent is for any other operation but since our subject is more towards payment i'm i'm talking about only payments here so if you double click on the power button then it initiates a payment basically a gesture to perform a particular operation so whenever you perform that gesture or an operation then without the involvement of the normal operating system or the application processor the the operation is directly initiated onto the secure element so when you perform a double click there is no involvement of the op normal operating system which takes care of the day to day activities the secure element directly comes into picture so the operation directly initiates a payment let's look at card registration and payment aspect what are the different channels for performing a card provisioning apple provides two major methods for doing card provisioning basically how you can add the card credentials onto apple pay you can either add the card credentials via an issuer ecosystem or you can enter your card credentials directly on the apple device firstly on the issuer ecosystem you can provision your card credentials into apple pay via an issuer mobile application so whatever internet banking application that an issuer has you can provision the card credentials via an app similarly if the issuer has an online banking portal you can add the credentials on to apple pay via an online banking portal or a widget on the mobile so basically these are the three methods which the issuers can offer themselves to provision a card into apple with an apple device you can either use the apple wallet app or the settings app to add the card credentials like with any token provisioning there are three steps in apple pay for token provisioning also first you enter the card details next you perform the authentication which is id and validation and then you activate the card credential so as i mentioned in the previous slide you can either enter your card credentials via an issuer app ecosystem or directly on the apple devices now let's see how does authentication happen so what apple does is whenever you add a credentials it recommends if an authentication is to be performed in the first place and if an authentication is to be performed then they recommend into an orange or an yellow flow if they say that no this card is kind of risky or if they do they put it into red flow where it is not provisioned so in case of a green flow apple recommends for no subsequent authentication method in case of an orange or an yellow then they recommend to have a second factor authentication and if they decide not to recommend to add then they provide into red flow and the different types of authentication methods that apple provides is you can do a second factor authentication for adding a credentials using your sms email phone call in app sim verification or touch id and face id so these are the different second factor authentication uh, methods to provision a token and finally the activation of the token and then the token credentials are pushed from that apple's tsm on to the secure element in the apple iphone so now let's look into the standard provisioning process 
So you have an Apple device with the wallet and a secure element. Then you have an Apple Pay server. Then you have the schemes. It need not be always schemes. There's a token service provider, but majorly schemes act as a token service provider. So I put the scheme names here. This is basically the token service provider here and then issue a bank system. So what's the first step? The customer enters their card credentials onto the wallet app. Then wallet app passes securely the information onto the Apple servers. Apple servers first validate if this issuer bin is registered for Apple Pay or not. And if they are registered, Apple sends the credentials or the card further to the TSP for tokenization. And then as I mentioned, it also provides the flow. Is it a green flow, yellow or orange or red flow? for further um, ID and V validation. Schemes then pass the ID information and ID and, ID and V validation information, whatever it received to the issuer host system. The issuer host system then works with the customer to perform the actual ID and V validation. So basically to authenticate the customer. Once the authentication is performed, I mean the completion of the ID and V is performed, then the Apple wallet passes the information to the Apple Pay servers that it is kind of complete. And then Apple Pay servers work with the TSPs to ensure the completion of tokenization. So the whole tokenization process happens here. And then the Apple Pay servers then provision the payment wallet applet that is the token and other information directly onto the secure element here. So this is how the whole credential process is complete. First step is entering the card credentials. Second step is authentication. And then finally, the provisioning of the token information directly onto the secure element. And then obviously, once it is done, there is an activation sent by the TSP onto the issuer host system. Now let's look at how a payment transaction is initiated. So here I'm going to cover only about contactless transaction initiated from an Apple phone. I'm not going to talk about in-app uh, payments or web-based payments, etc. So here, when I'm going to double click on the Apple phone and then initiate the payment, again, the secure intent here is double clicking on the power button. Then the intent is passed onto the secure element that is on the Apple phone. And then the secure element then works with the secure enclave to perform the authentication. Once the authentication is performed, then the secure element initiates the commands required via NFC controller and then NFC controller passes the commands onto the terminal. So this is the way in which a transaction is initiated and completed within an Apple Pay on an iPhone. There are many more to explore. Uh, one, how in-app provisioning works. I've only covered provisioning when you enter the card credentials on a wallet app. How does e-commerce transactions work and what are lifecycle management events? What happens if a card is blocked? What happens if a phone is lost, etc.? So there are li different lifecycle management events which could be explored further. Some credits, uh, I mean sources from where I gathered this uh, information from. I'll provide these links also on the description. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope you learned something new from it. Do post your feedback as comments and like the video if you learned something new from it. Thank you.